Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Hope you're all doing well. A cup of coffee. So I've just been eating out of seed bowls. <laughs> I was in a sweet shop yesterday. Yoldy Worldy sweet shop. And I bought some anna seed bowls. Sort of sort of that size, sort of um pistol ball shot, shall we say. <laughs> She had all sorts of this old lady, she had all sorts of their pondy frack cakes and toffee twists, toffee whirls and flying saucers and all sorts of wonderful things. <laughs> so I'm good. Reminds me when I was a kid, we used to go to this cinema <coughs> Saturday mornings, my mother would give me 15 new pens. 10p to get into the cinema, 5p to go into the sweet shop next door, another oldie worldie sweet shop, and I buy 5p's worth of sweets, 5 new pence worth of sweets, which was quite a bit in them days, then 10p into the cinema, and that was Saturday morning, sorted, fantastic. Yeah, I was going to talk to you, <laughs> once we get off sweet shops, I was going to talk to you about antennas, and a bit of antenna theory, and so on and so forth because I'd been thinking about building an antenna for quite some time a new antenna for quite some time because I hadn't built anything for quite some time and I'm I enjoy building antennas um, I enjoy the challenge of what they may or may not bring how they may work how they may not work um, and I like to keep progressing as well if I can in whatever hobby I'm doing, I like to progress, try and get better and better. And, um, I always like to try and receive more, and if I receive more, then I want to push it a bit further. That's just just me. And so I was, I was looking on YouTube at different videos, and I found a video by a radio amateur in America, and I'll put the link down below for this video. And it was doublet against an uh, N fed half wave antenna. And the, con the comparisons between you know, performance, noise rejection, and so and so forth. And the low the low noise floor of the doublet on this video was quite amazing. The guy had a SDR software up, a SDR defined, you know, software defined radio on his computer, and you can see the waterfall display. And he was showing you the difference between the noise levels of the doublet and then the end fed half wave, which was quite amazing, quite amazing. So my, when we started talking about that, my ears pricked up. And then within the video, we also said it makes a pretty good shortwave listening antenna, so my ears pricked up even further. So I thought, must do, must do. So I ordered all the relevant bits. Um, roller copper wire, 450 ohm, ladder line or window line whatever you want to call it uh, a dipole center that's basically all you need that's basically it or a couple of um, excuse me just a second had a couple of these for the ends just to make a professional job of it dog bone insulators So anyway, all the bits duly arrived and I built this thing in my kitchen. It's that simple to build. I mean, a competent child of 10 could build a doublet. A little bit of soldering to do, but it, it's no great hardship. Just soldering a couple of connectors to the copper wire and the ladder line. It, it's no big deal. So anyway, I built this thing and put it up in the loft, erected it up in the loft. 
And on the video, the guy said he wanted it for 80 meters. <laughs> Although it easily tune to other bands, 40 meters, 20 meters, so on and so on and so on. Apparently he had this thing tuned up to about up to six meters, it would tune for transmitting purposes. I know we're only listening, but for transmitting purposes. So he cut his to 120 feet. Because he wanted it for 80 meters. Well, 120 feet. Um, doesn't quite get you to 80 meters. It's very close. I mean, he did say it could be a little bit longer, but it, it was near enough for his purposes. He run it into a tuner and it was no problem. If you take our equation that we've talked about in, I did a video on antenna theory, and I said in that particular video, the equation is 468 divided by the frequency you want to listen to, gives you the answer, the length of a wire antenna in feet. Or you can do 143 times the frequency you want to listen to. That gives you the answer in meters. You can work it either way. So if you take that equation, 120 feet, that means his antenna was set at 3.9 megahertz, which is near enough for 80 meters. 80 meters being 3.5, 3.8, so it's near enough near enough but um, those equations I'll tell you something about those equations quickly they're perfectly valid equations they're true equations those two equations you can find them in radio amateur books you can find them online they're perfectly valid equations you know when I said in my early video on antenna theory I mention those equations I was writing what I said they are valid equations that's how you find the length of a wire antenna or a wire dipole or even a um, zeppelin or something like that. that that's right but for listening purpose I'll tell you something for listening purposes those equations do not apply you can forget those equations for listening purposes because that's what we're concerned with here, listening. We're not concerned with transmitting. We're just concerned with listening. So those equations, don't. I've now learned, those equations don't apply. And I will explain why I, I say that. So I built this antenna, this doublet. Up in the loft now, put the ladder line down through the ceiling, a little hole in the ceiling, which was a pig because the ladder line wanted a twist on itself all the time, like a bloody snake. So it was a real pig to get it to come through. I'm now looking back on it, I'm thinking I could have pushed it down through the ceiling a lot easier. I've done it a different way, but I won't bore you with how I could have done it. But it but I got there in the end anyway. So this is all erected in my loft now, 120 foot doublet, insulators on the end, done, done all a proper job. So I fire it up on 80 meters now, comparing it to my um, coax fed dipole, which I'd still left in the loft for comparison reasons, it, compare the two side by side. So I fire up the doublet now, on 80 meters and the performance is absolutely fantastic on 80 meters it was like so so much better than the dipole and a lot lower lot lower noise floor as he said in the video you watch the video you'll you'll see it he's absolutely right there's a much lower noise floor on the um, doublet it was fantastic. So bearing in mind what he said, it's a good shortwave listening antenna and it'll tune across, I think right now, right, we'll go up to 40, uh, uh, 40 meters, seven megs, it was like up there. And the, com um, 
performance up there in comparison to the dipole is absolutely crap. I mean, I could not believe how poor the doublet was on 40 meters compared to the dipole. It's absolutely crap. I mean, you'd get a signal on the doublet, it would be like three on the meter on the radio, and you'd flip to the dipole, it'd be like seven or eight. It was that much difference. It was crap. So I thought, well, I'm not, not, not impressed with that. So we'll go further up and above seven megahertz, above 40 meters, um, broadcast bands and so on and so forth. It was either as good as the dipole, comparable with the dipole. In a couple of cases, it was better than the dipole. It had, it's got this lovely low noise floor, I will say that. But it was just, wasn't what I thought or what I expected at all. Um, great on 80 meters, crap on 40 meters. And not really that much better than the dipole anywhere else. So I'm sort of rubbing my chin a bit at this now. I'm thinking, well, if you take our equation 468 divided by the frequency you want to listen to going by that if we say we want to get it better on 40 meters it obviously needs to be shorter because the further up the frequency table you go the shorter the wire antenna gets I mean 30 megahertz is 15.6 feet 25 megahertz gives you 18.72 um, 20 megahertz gives you 23.4 15 megahertz gives you 31 10 megahertz gives you 46 feet 15 megahertz you're now up to 93.6 so on and so on so it gets longer as you drop down so going by that equation I would need to shorten it. But that would start taking me away from 80 meters. It's all a bit of a compromise. Um, Multi-band antennas, almost a bit of a compromise. But anyway, sometimes it's good to think outside the box. Don't always think within the box. The dipole compared to the doublet was a few feet longer. Not, I mean, not a huge amount longer, but it was a few feet longer. So, you know, like I say, I think outside the box sometimes, which is good to do. And rather than go chopping bits off it, you know, let's, let's not be rash here and start chopping bits off this thing which I might regret. Let's lengthen it, see what happens. And so I lengthened it from 120 feet. Now I, forgive me, I forget exactly how much I lengthened it by. I wish I'd have wrote it down really. But anyway, I, up in the loft now, lengthened it. put it all back up <clears throat> fire up the receiver go on 80 meters yeah fabulous much better than the dipole I go on 40 meters now bang I could hear things on the doublet which were totally inaudible on the dipole yeah, I'd gone from one extreme to the other I'd gone from much worse than the dipole to far better than the dipole by lengthening the antenna. Now that flies in the face of that equation 468 divided by 
Now that's a, like I said to you, that's a perfectly valid equation, and 143 divided by frequency equals answer in meters. That's a perfectly valid equation, a perfectly sound equation for transmitting. You cut your antenna to the length the equation gives you, like for 40 meters, if you cut it to the middle of the 40 meter band, say 7.1 megahertz, that would give you 65.91 feet. And when you go to tune your antenna, which is your SWR on your transceiver, that would be right. That's for transmitting. For listening, that doesn't apply. Because I went the opposite way to what that equation would have told me, and I lengthened the antenna and got a great improvement. I got a great improvement. So you can, for listening purposes, for just, just listening, you can disregard those um, equations. You can you can forget them. So anyway, I'm now trial and error trying different lengths on this doublet and checking the performance. I wish I had a garden, you know, I could do a lot more testing. And at one point, see I think I've lengthened it and got better performance. Is it a case that maybe I should just get as much 1.6 mil copper wire as I can get my hands on and just chuck it up in the loft and be done with it? But that's not it either. That's not it either, because at one point I had this doublet up to 290 feet in length, going right up and down the loft. But if you were to stretch it out that way, it would be 290 feet. And performance suffered, I tell you. It, it, it was receiving stuff, but it wasn't great. It wasn't great. So trial and error, as much as I'm wanting to do, you know, going up and down the loft. I've got it down to 240 feet and it's working very, very well. 80 meters, 40 meters, you know, broadcast bands. Um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So I couldn't be happier, I couldn't be happier, but it's... Um, what you think you know and what you actually know can be two different things. You know, like I say, you know, um, those equations are valid, but not for listening. They're not valid for listening. And there probably has to be, you know, there has to be an optimum length for this antenna. I don't know what it would be. If I had a garden, I would find out because I would just build a load of these things and run them side by side and I would find the optimum length but I've done as much testing as I want to do going up and down the loft I don't want to do it anymore and I'm, I've settled on 240 feet and that's giving me lovely reception lovely reception so much better than the dipole I mean the noise floor is some evenings here the noise floor is um, eerily silent and you wonder whether you've got a, <laughs> a bug in your system or something's not working right because it's, it's so quiet. Fantastic, fantastic. I can't be, can't be happier. But if you think about it, um, I know the gentleman in the video was comparing it to an NFAD but I was comparing it to another dipole which had a ballon in the center I've got the, got the old ballon here somewhere hang on, a, hang on just a second excuse me just a second yeah here you go there's the old ballon at the the old dipole the coax fed dipole If you think about it, 
what it actually boils down to. If you boil it down to its simplest thing, it was a coax fed dipole compared to a ladder line fed dipole. I will say with the doublet, there's one thing with the doublet, you need to run it through a four to one ballon. My antenna tuning unit on the back, it has connections for ladder line, which go through a four to one ballon. So um, you do need a ballon to go with it. But it's at the end of the day, it's just two dipoles, one coax fed and one fed by ladder line. Now, bods, bods tell you, uh, radio amateurs will tell you, and technicians will tell you, that all this nasty electronics that from Philippines and China and all these places, Taiwan, that people use that are unsuppressed and unregulated, that kick out all this hash that Shore radios pick up. When you've got an antenna, it comes down the outer braid of the coax gets into your system. And there you can have the best coax in the world, which I had. I had the best coax I could get. It was as thick as my thumb. It's supposed to be, you know, like commercial grade used by government agencies and stuff. And I still got a lot of hash because it's coming down the braid. So I suppose it's a bit common sense really, is it? Um, if you do away with the coax, you've cut out that avenue for that hash to get in your system. And it's proven out by the performance I'm getting of the doublet. Straight ladder line. The only bit of coax I have in line now is a couple of patch leads linking my units together. I can't, you can't get away from that. Well, not to my knowledge anyway. But all the coax going up into the loft, that's, that's history. And it's, it's so much quieter. And I have to say to you, um, there's no way, no way in this world I would go back to a coax fed antenna. No way in this world. The difference is night and day. It just, it's just the coax just lets in so much crap. I mean, it's just, it's just remarkable. It's, it's a remarkable thing. Um, if somebody was going to ask me, I'm thinking of putting up an outside antenna. I want to get a base receiver and I want to put up an outside antenna for shortwave. What do you recommend? I would say anything but coax fed. Don't have a coax fed antenna. All right, if you're living in a cottage in the middle of nowhere, probably doesn't make that much difference. But for an urban environment, for an urban, like living in town or a city or something, it makes a hell of a difference. A hell of a difference. Don't, don't entertain a coax fed antenna. It just, because that's the only difference between the two, coax and non-coax. You know, they were both roughly the same size. They both had a ballon. So the only difference was coax against ladder line. You know, because you're using ladder line, um, there wasn't less signal return or anything like that. It was heaps better. Stronger signals, you know, hearing more. I can hear stuff that I couldn't hear on the dipole. You know, the noise floor is down, it's just night and day different, night and day, as I hopefully will show you in some up and coming videos. So that's, what, that's sort of what I learned, the equations that we know, they don't apply for listening. Um, you never know what you think you know and what you actually know, two different things. Um, don't use coax 
for an antenna, use ladder line, 450 ohm ladder line, very easy to build, um, a very worthwhile experience, um, I'm glad I did it, it was a lot of work, a lot of effort, and taking down the old dipole as well, and the zeppelin is still up in the loft, but I'm actually using that now as a noise antenna for the MFJ 1026 unit because I don't need the Zeppelin for um, receive. That was the thing before with the dipole around 9, 10 megahertz around there it was so noisy the dipole that I had to use the Zeppelin because it was quieter and it, it wasn't that quiet an antenna but it was quieter than the dipole around there but now I don't need that either so the Zeppelin's on the 1026 noise unit which I don't use that much now because I don't really need to and um, the old noise antenna that's come down so all I've got for an antenna now is the doublet that's it I don't use anything else now I don't need anything else so to my satisfaction, um, a good length for general receiving antenna, doublet wise, is 240 feet. Which if you work that out by our equation, if you work that out quickly before I go and leave you all go, that would put it down on 1.95 megahertz. That's if you're transmitting, that is. But like I say, for listening purposes, disregard that equation. You can forget that equation. That doesn't come into it. Um, trial and error, yeah, for me, trial and error, I found a good length was 240 feet, which is up, up in the loft now. So yeah, thoroughly good. A thoroughly good build, very straightforward, very easy. Um, if you've got a garden and you're thinking of putting up an antenna, get yourself a doublet video link down below and you can watch the difference in the noise it's everything he says it is actually he made it 120 feet he wanted it for 80 meters so that's great i'm actually 240 i've actually doubled it for general listening i and i wonder sometimes before i go um how some of these radio amateurs get on because uh, they're using doublets as multi-band antennas for transmitting yeah that's 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 fine but your receive it's not going to be as good as it could be is it surely because I made 120 foot doublet like he did and I used it on 40 meters and even with the tuner the performance the receive capabilities was crap absolute I gotta say crap so it would have transmitted no problem yeah fine but you receive I mean, that's probably why thinking about it that's probably why a lot of radio amateurs use two antennas you you hear if you listen to them you hear quite often you hear them say somebody says you know what antenna are you using and he's, the guy will say well I'm transmitting on blah 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 I'm receiving on that's possibly why it's possibly why um, yeah I wonder whether you, it, it's I wonder whether it is possible to get transmitting performance out of an antenna and full receive potential out the same antenna. I wonder sometimes. I wonder. I wonder. It's all it it's all interesting stuff. It's all interesting stuff. But there you go, that's what I've done. It's enhanced my station no end. I've also added a counterpoise to my grounding unit. Because um, I live in a first floor apartment, so 
there's a cable going down to the pole in the ground outside which is a little bit long really longer than it needs to be so I added a counterpoise to the grounding unit which has also helped and on the lower frequencies you tune in the doublet on the tuning unit but you can also get more out of it by twisting the capacitance on the grounding unit and you can watch the needle rise and the signal come in by tuning the capacitance on the grounding unit as well which is just totally amazing totally amazing but anyway I got some videos to put up for receiving with the doublet so we'll do that in a bit but anyway thanks for your time thanks for watching I've gone to 30 minutes and half an hour rambling but there you go see you on the next one if I can if I can turn this machine off